Okay, take 10. <laughs> Every time I try and record something, something goes wrong with the phone. Been walking around this park for probably three hours trying to do it. Anyway, this is Baron Dodger, and I'm here with Crystal the Husky. And um, we're on a bit of a mission, you see. The thing is, it's a very difficult situation. I have no home. Uh, that abuses, or is in spite of the Charter of Human Rights of a Person with a Disability, ratified by the government in 2008. So I've got no home. I'm officially unable to be able to afford rent. Someone surely must have an issue with that. So um, it's a difficult situation as well. I'll try and be quick. I have um, been a rejected whistleblower, leaving me open to vulnerability and corruption. I cannot go to police and the police know me well um, um, because um, they're actually a part of a government system and it's the government abusing me. And um, I have been psychometrically profiled. So that means um, every time I ring a lawyer or legal aid or any place, or even any place indeed, um, my reputation precedes me and there's a big red button that says, don't help this man. So when you can't get whistleblower protection and you can't go to police and you can't get a lawyer and you've lost your job because of illness relating to your sexual abuse, um, because of corruption, and you've been opposed by powerful people such as Russell Wall, who silenced legitimate evidence all across the board and up to including the Ombudsman, and even the transcript of that evidence. Um, and he informs government policy. And you've also got a former partner who's um, an ASIO agent, Steve Isonides. Hi, Steve, how are you going? Hope things are good for you. Um, and he's managed to convince the entire government, all police, all healthcare workers, all um, people in my life, friends and family, to never legitimise that that relationship ever existed. And it's kind of a bit weird because, you know, to do so, it would lead to uh, his obligation to me for the five years he exploited me. And um, he would have to pay me um, um, half a million dollars because of um, uh, the, the laws surrounding what the definitions are for a de facto relationship at that time. Now, as a targeted individual, and I'll describe that what it means in a, in a minute, it's very difficult to get anything done. Um, I've tried to get back to work. I want to go back to work. Um, all I want to do is live in society so I can serve it. That's all I've done and all I did do for 30 years, um, helping people. And many of you might um, understand or know that um, I've been an active advocate after my Human Rights Award autobiography was... Um, released to great acclaim but also great detriment i mean the herald sun vilified me publicly humiliated me and i used to work there and um then the age where i was fired me for no reason um because of the discrimination shame pre prejudice stigma that only exists around the things of schizophrenia and mental illness and whatever was else in the book so mm -hmm. um yeah, it's been a pretty brutal um, start. And that, from that point on, back in about 2002, is where um, my detriment really started to happen. So um, I've faced an uphill battle my whole life. It's been a pretty hard thing. I've been an artist my whole life. I've been an advocate for um, over 30 years, helping people. I've spoken in Australian Parliament. I've spoken everywhere from Montreal to Warrnambool um, to Dubbo, all over radio and TV, all over the place. And um, I've been a really well-known person. I think there's even a Wikipedia page after me. And then I began to piss off some powerful people. One being Steve, my beautiful former partner, who everyone's taken the side of. And um, the other's a very powerful lawyer, Russell Ball, who informs government policy and opposed me in a malpractice case. So together with my public profile of having schizophrenia, and the shame, prejudice and stigma and discrimination associated with that, I've found myself to be a targeted individual of the Australian government. That means I'm on their radar. That means they watch me. I've filmed them surveilling my house. That means I get harassed covertly in a way that never identifies who they are, but it actually allows um, my continued persecution to happen. Um, it's called no-touch torture. They'll do anything um, to act in a systemic or political way to enable my detriment. So this has been happening for a long time. And um, it was happening for such a long time that um, I was pretty overwhelmed with my own sexual abuse case that a Geelong VOCAT um, 
uh, judge threw out as doomed to fail, which was colourful language for a sexual abuse survivor. But anyway, um, that happened, and I had a break from work because I was triggered by my client. So anyway, um, I left work for a while, thinking I'd go on um, my income assist just for a couple of weeks till I got back. But at the same time, I sent an email about Steve and the super he owes me to his lawyer. And the next thing you know, they're on my door and they're um, incarcerating me as a political prisoner, someone who upset the apple cart. So in hospital, when I was there that time, a tragedy happened. I was isolated. The world had forsaken me. I'd explained in a website all my problems. And it was also true that um, if I had people to talk to who I trusted and who could help me, I wouldn't need a whistleblowing website. So, um, so I'd done this and um, they isolated me, put me in a horrible situation in hospital, uh, gave me medication I didn't need, took away the medication I did need, and I attempted suicide. And it was a success. The Freedom of Information from that time, three years ago, says it was um, a fatal injury and a lethal attempt. I wasn't mucking around, it wasn't extortion. The world had forsaken me, my only regret, was leaving Crystal the dog, which is my channel sin and shame. So, um, so I was revived reluctantly, and uh, I lived. And it's an unusual situation to have a suicide survivor who can actually point out the reasons why he did it. And this is exactly why I did it. It's a deceit. It's the neglect. It's the um, no-touch torture. It's the coercive financial control, financial abuse. It's vilification for mental illness, whether it's there or whether it's not. And it's a systemic and political kind of persecution that's linked to my public profile, it's linked to being gay, and it's linked um, to the very creativity and agency and passion with which I've embraced life. And to be honest, people are jealous. They don't like that um, I've achieved so much. They're aware that I've got a big heart and they're aware that I'm compassionate. So what's happened to me ultimately is that I've been gang stalked, which means not just one person stalking you, but a whole bunch of people are stalking you and causing you detriment. And that includes, um, for the people who've covered up the Steve situation, everyone I know, every cop, every um, healthcare worker, and every ombudsman. Now there's a complication as well with this thing because um, I've been protesting this for a long time and um, it's been three years since I was revived from death and I've lived in poverty as an infamous vagrant and as, as someone um, who has no human rights, who's denied legal rights and who also um, um, is a rejected whistleblower, which of course would have protected me for all of the corruption that I was calling out, including like being banned at AFCA, being the Australian Human Rights Commission not investigating your documented human rights abuses from an NDIS worker. It's just an absurd amount of um, creativity that's gone into the non delegitimization of my story and the um, persecution of me, which is causing my financial detriment, covering Steve's ass, protecting the rich and the powerful, and protecting the powerful people with the money, the facts, and the political uh, might. So, um, this has gone on for a long time. I'm a rejected whistleblower. Time goes on. Next thing you know, they hospitalised me seven times in two years. Each time, mostly as a political prisoner, not really for the mental illness, although that's present. It's a vulnerability that I have, but it's intentionally amplified by the system that's caring for it. And that's a fact. So, um, so they hospitalised me for three whole months. Three months I was in hospital for. I wasn't sick, I was sick of their shit. Anyway, so um, while I was in there, the hospital I was in, Werribee Mercy, oversaw um, my old landlord, Hung Ho, g'day Hung Ho, the foe, um, go to my home, um, enter it with the police's blessing and empty it out. They got all of my possessions and they took it to the chip. And then when the hospital released me, they released me into a homeless shelter down at, um, West Melbourne Flagstaff for a men's shelter for homeless men with a bag of t-shirts and not even a well wish. It's been a brutal oppression of me and from that time um, just at the start of last year I've had to um, 
climb uphill an inch every single step of the way in poverty with the only merely obligatory thing given to me is um, a disability pension. And if they stopped that, that would absolutely mean that um, evidence that they were literally trying to crucify me and not only remove my prosperity and my money, but as the outer things to that of removing someone's money, it's in order to destroy them and remove the agency they have to exist in the society. Society didn't want me, it was clear. And so um, I was hospitalized again, again, I lost my house, the house I was in, and they kept putting me in accommodation, which was barely accommodatable. Uh, and I, I want to say, I'm not mentioning a couple of people who I'm forbidden to because of a court order. And that's the next problem. Um, so um, so oh, I'm left to my own devices and literally forced out into the street, into my car, as an infamous vagrant, homeless, to live in his car. What was I going to fucking do? I've got no one to turn to. The health system is certainly aren't helping me. And neither are the police, who are after me. <coughs> and um, I had to go and live in the paddock at police paddocks in Dandenong. Well, you know, it wasn't too bad. There was heaps of sexy guys in the bushes to have sex with. But, um, but you know, that was that was just the... the come, on, come on, come on, Crystal. Crystal's having a... She's stopping. <sighs> Kids. And then, um, and so I was living in the park as a vagrant. And then um, I finally got some accommodation. And... Um, I'm in that accommodation now, but I, I can't afford it because I've got so many detriments and debts from three years of living in poverty coming out that it's not sustainable. So I haven't got enough for food. I haven't got enough to afford rent. And the agencies that are supposed to care for me have all denied um, obligation and have the, st the bystander theory. So everyone thinking that it's someone else's problem. Come on, Crystal. So, um, yeah. So right now, it's an appalling an abhorrent betrayal from Australia who really doesn't help me. And it's also um, a profound human rights abuse um, that's clearly happening right in front of anyone's eyes. But I mean, who would help me? Because I'm a scapegoat and a rejected whistleblower. And of course, I don't treat those people very nice because I've become a liability for the government for calling out their corruption. So they're trying to silence me in every way they can. So in actual fact, um, there um, I've now been arrested and charged on um, indictable offences. And um, I won't go into the detail because I'm not allowed because of the court order. But, um, but I'm facing sentencing in a month's time and they're going to jail me. And who would stop them? Um, there's not a person left in my life. It's just me and the dog. I try and hang on every day. I try and um, remain positive. And um, I'm hopeful of some solution. Um, at some point, I've been desperately um, designing a whistleblower website in order to um, curtail the um, hypocrisy of the police's actions and the corruption by which I'm being persecuted still, years after it actually caused me to kill myself. And then um, I was revived and then that murder covered up. So I guess you could say it's an interesting life. It's a little bit colourful. The colours are a bit murky sometimes. Um, I'd love um, someone to just step forward and go, gee, shit what happened to you, Rich, Baron, whatever you want to call me, and I'm going to help you. Those people I haven't come across with yet without being complicit or conciliatory or on condition. I'm going to put this out there. It's been a nice little talk and a um, nice little walk around a nice little park. But my life's not sustainable and the train's careering towards the tracks. I'm tied up. I need a lawyer. I need justice. I need someone to intervene. I need someone to stop what's just about to happen. And everyone's watching and no one's doing anything. So if no one responds to this I'll have to take matters into my own hands as I've always done and um, yeah I've walked three times around the park now because the phone keeps stopping Crystal's all tired, we're going to go home 
I'm going to keep working on my website, which is um, baronodger.com.au. That's me, Baron. And you know who I am. You all know who I am. And I really realise um, the qualities of human nature of being judgmental and dismissive. I actually love people and I love the earth and I love animals and I want to stay here. Um, and that's looking like it could be under threat, imminent threat. Anyway, um, I'm going to sign off now. Have a look at baronodger.com.au if you want to help. Amazing. If you've got a spare money for a coffee, amazing. Um, I've just, um, you know, um, loaned my car out somewhere for favours. Actually, I was going to fuck someone anyway, but he... <laughs> sorry about this. Sorry, my, sorry if anyone's listening to this, he's got sensitive ears. This guy was gagging for root the other day, and he... And he <laughs> I said, well, how much are you going to pay me? He was going to pay me. So I went, eh, could be worse. It's the oldest profession in the universe. But, I'm, but yeah, I'm, um, <laughs> I'm doing extraordinary things in order to hang on to life and um, prosperity. I've lost a bit of weight, I know, in my face. And um, I've got my drop, lip dropped there from the um, injury in hospital. I can see on the phone. Anyway, good luck to you. And I hope you never um, suffer anything as harsh as political scapegoating, as being a targeted individual of the Australian government who's been identified to be destroyed and silenced because I'm a liability simply for speaking the truth. Thanks a lot.